Hey, me and Matt here. 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 Hey, Wrestle Kingdom 14 and just as good as the last one. I mean, holy shit. There's really nothing I can say that will justify it, but I mean, it was a really good show and it was just one of those things where it can't get any better than this. So we had only one match for the pre show. You have Las Inca Bulls Digipon who had defeated the most violent players and Suzuki Gun and the Bullet Club. So yeah, this was a really good match and it was a gauntlet match. So of course you had the most violent players get beat and then so on and so forth. Of course, like I said, this was La Senga Bulls did Japan who won this match. And became the never open weight six man take team champions, which I think is pretty cool. I thought Ring of Honor did something similar to that, but I haven't watched Ring of Honor that much in the past couple weeks, and I don't remember them mentioning it. So to see it there was pretty cool. Then we go on to this show where we've got a take team match. This was, of course, Jushin Thunder Langer's last match. And, you know, what a great wrestler. And I mean, here's a guy that started 35 years ago and, you know, wrestled in Japan, WCW. He may have wrestled in ECW, Mexico. He didn't really wrestle in WWF, I don't recall. I don't really know where I saw him. But he did wrestle at the NXT TakeOver Revival, I believe it was. And I did a review of that. But yeah, this guy had a historic career in the wrestling business and will go down as one of the best Japanese wrestlers in the business. You know, this is, you know, one of these things where. The show looks at the retirement and it's almost like WWE and I'll get to that in a second here. But it was Hiromi Takahashi and Ryu Lee defeating Jushin Thunder Liger in Naoku Sero. So yeah, Jushin got pinned. You know, and it was like, there wasn't really that big of a celebration. It was just, you know, him slapping hands with the fans and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, it's sentimental for a lot of guys that have seen him in his historic career, including the people from the Wrestling Audio Revolution, who I know are big fans of his. And it was, you know, bittersweet. And I think this guy definitely had to be in the Mount Rushmore of Japanese wrestling, in my opinion. I wish that he did wrestle more in WWF or WWE for that matter. But, you know, there's always an ending to a great chapter, you know. And I think that we'll see where this goes. And I think... Then Japan, it's a lot more honorable than WWE C Undertaker. This was a good match, and it was awesome to see him still be as active as he was. Like, 
let's say, 20 years ago or so. You know, this guy definitely was one of the best wrestlers, I said. And, yeah. And I think of these other guys, too, that really helped have a great match. So, yeah, there it is. At the IWGP Tag Team Championship, you've got Rapongi 3K, which, of course, Yo and Sho, and they defeated the Bullet Club to become the new Tag Team Champions, which was kind of interesting. I, Tonga Loa and Tamatonga lost last night to Juice Robinson and David Finley, so this was pretty cool. This match was awesome as well. I think that Yo is one of those guys that's very inventive in the ring, which I mean, he was getting a low blow from, I believe. El Fantasmo, and of course, he was actually, he wore FUCKING CUP! Yeah, this joke's definitely gonna get old. And I didn't know this, but El Fantasmo is from BC, so another good Canadian wrestler in my books. But yeah, Yo and Show definitely, again, one of the best take teams in Japan, too. And, like I said, very creative in the ring but glad that they became the new tag team champions. So we'll see where that goes. We've got the British Heavyweight Championship. We've got Zack Sabre Jr. who defeated Sonata. And this match was awesome as well. I appreciate seeing Zack Sabre Jr. in the ring. Of course, he's wrestled in WWE for a short time in the Cruiserweight Classics. He has been on other TV wrestling shows. This match was cool. Sonata was also really good as well, trying to figure out what happened. I was just finished watching and I'm trying to think back. But yeah, there it is. He retains the title. We've got the U.S. Championship. That's funny. We've got the British Championship and now we got the U.S. Championship. But John Moxley versus Juice Robinson. Now, Juice is the one half of the tag team champions with David Finley. So, and this match was really good too. I didn't know if it was going to succeed the way that their match in June was, but fuck, I was wrong. I mean, this was awesome. And I didn't want to see choose two belts. I really didn't. But John Moxley won. You had a point where, again, with the DDT on the outside, it was awesome. They had wrestled everywhere on the outside of the ring. And at one point, I thought they wrestled in a ramp. Well, actually, that's where they started. But, yeah, this was a good match, too. I really enjoy seeing John Moxley. Like I said in the last review for day one I don't know what's going to happen once he goes to AEW he's probably going to take the belt with him but again I don't know so we'll see you have Hiroi Goto who defeated Kenta to become the never open weight champion holy shit this match was awesome I really enjoy Kenta. You know, guy came back to New Japan and fucking was a hell of a lot better than he was when he went to NXT. That's not really a knock on NXT. In fact, that's a better WWE program, but I mean, shit, this guy definitely pulled out all the stops. I think they both pulled out all those stops. But, again, Hiroki had the win and is the new champion. So, I mean, yeah, I can say what I want about Kenta, but Hiroki is one of the best wrestlers also in Japan. And him winning this match, I'm sure they may have a rematch in the future. So we'll see about that. We have this match here with Chris Jericho. 
versus Hiroshi Tanahashi. This was funny. Uh, but I mean, here's what I said earlier about John Moxley as the IWGP United States Champion. So you have this match and a stipulation if Hiroshi beat Chris, he would get an AWA championship match in the future. Now, I thought this was pretty cool because we could end up seeing Hiroshi Tanahashi in the US, in AEW, that would be pretty cool. But this match was awesome as well. And there was one point where Hiroshi got spiked on the head on a table and the table didn't break. So I thought that was pretty fucked up, <laughs> you know. You had Chris Jericho pull out all the stops as well. You know, mocking Hiroshi Tanahashi doing the air guitar. There was a point where he even got up on the top rope and did that. And it was like, he did, I think, a high fly flow and missed. But, yeah, this match was awesome. And Chris hit the Lion Tamer, or Walls of Jericho, if you will, and won by submission. So, I guess there's going to be no AEW Championship match. Which is kind of disappointing because I wouldn't mind seeing Hiroshi in AEW for a bit. But we'll see where this goes in the future. You know, I wouldn't mind seeing it, but there it is. So you have the main event. This is for all the gold. You've got the IWGP Championship and the IWGP Intercontinental Championship. You've got Tsuya Naito versus Rainmaker Kazuchika Okada. And this was pretty cool. I mean, you had Naito win the title of the Intercontinental Championship on day one. And then, of course, Rainmaker is the IWGP champion. So, this match was really cool. I mean, you think that Hogan and a Warrior at WrestleMania 6 was good but this match was fucking brilliant as well and i think that it was even better and i think you had a lot of close calls a lot of false finishes that you thought okay there is a winner but you know i get a two count and there it is this match was you know one of the best matches of the year so far and it's 2020 so fuck it it's gonna be listed as one of the matches of the year so this was awesome, and Naito is now the new IWGP champion, but also still your Intercontinental Champion, so that's pretty awesome. And like I said last year, I've watched Naito in, you know, New Japan and I CMLL, like, for about 10 years, and it was fucking amazing. And he deserves it too, so I can't wait to see where they go with this. I really don't, so I mean, it's going to be awesome. Anyways, yeah, I can't wait to see what's in store for next time, but I'll talk to you later. Bye.